Good morning, everybody. I'm working, am I? Yes. <laughs> well, wasn't it uh, exciting to watch the coronation last night? And I can see we're lacking numbers, so there's a few people who haven't uh, turned up this morning. Um, I was most impressed when I saw young George after Charles had the crown put on his head and he had this look of just anguish on his face. They go, Ooh, that's going to be me in a few years' time. But uh, a wonderful service to watch. And before we start our service this morning, we're going to sing a song that we haven't heard for some 70 odd years God Save the King. Be seated. Alan, thank you. Arold, thank you for figuring out how to play that with very uh, little notice. Uh, it's good to be with you this morning as we come again together to worship. Uh, to those of our church family, uh, welcome. To those who are visiting with us, it's lovely to have you with us this morning. May God bless you as we fellowship together this morning. Now this week I spent three days in Wellington with uh, 46 police chaplains. Uh, the majority of them uh, were Anglican. Every one of them ordained ministers in some capacity. It was interesting to learn that for our police uh, in particular our local police, 85% uh, of their work is family harm, family abuse, uh, family uh, violence. That's the one most challenging statistic that I learned about uh, while I was there. Of the 15,000 uh, staff of our police force, 12,000 a year seek counselling as a result of their work. And so to have uh, a privileged opportunity to be uh, a chaplain as part of this parish to our community police is not only important, uh, but it's uh, needed in a time where things are increasingly uh, getting more difficult. I watched new recruits who didn't look old enough to make their beds, uh, pulling apart rifles, cleaning them and assembling them. Uh, these are our police of the future and they have much ahead of them. I had a few uh, chaplains who were retired policemen and they talked about how different the current generation is how uh, less tolerant they are to the things around them and therefore how much more difficult it is to be a policeman in this day and age. So it's important, I trust, for us as a parish of this local community to remember to keep the work of our police and our community in your prayers, please. We shall begin our service this morning with our call to worship. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In our opening prayer, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may worthily praise you, worthily <laughs> praise your holy name through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayer of confession. Amen. 
God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiving. In silence, we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorrow. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on us. Pardon us and set us free. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Our sentence for the day, I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. And our collect of the day, eternal God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life for all creation. Grant us grace to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 7, reading from verses 55 to 60. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We shall now read Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. You are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let, me let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Glory to the Father and to the Spirit, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the book of the first book of Peter, chapter two, reading verses two to ten. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good 
As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what, what they were destined for. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Father, we ask that we would hear your word and that we would hear your voice, we pray. Amen. Well, last Sunday, I traveled across to the West Coast to visit a priest 
who has played a significant role in ministry both in this area and beyond. She had now moved to live with her daughter as she dealt with her health issues. We as priests are often very good at having conversation with people who are coming to the end of their lives. I must say, often we're not so good at having that conversation for ourselves. So my visit was a priest to priest visit where I would have that conversation with her. Amongst many of her worries and concerns was the main concern about her children. I need to get out of this bed. I need to go and drive to the other coast and talk to my children to help them come to terms with my health. I have one child in particular, she says, who needs a lot of help, so I'm not ready to die, she says, I have much work to do. As she continued to speak, eventually we turned the conversation to her and the fact of her own health. This is particularly what is happening in this morning's gospel. Jesus is about to die. He is wanting to prepare, in this case, the disciples for his pending death. He has said to them, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. It's important to keep in mind that before he said this to them, he had told the disciples that one of you is going to betray me. One of you is going to deny me. And I am about to be arrested, uh, crucified, and then I would rise again. So you can imagine the importance of those words to these disciples in that difficult time. Quite often we as people are often faced with the challenges of death. We are often seeing our own family and close family, friends, confronted with the ill health and then eventually the challenge of death. This week, for me, there have been a few more of those conversations around death, around the challenges of health and knowing that this was it for some of them and what do we do with that? One of the things that we can often think in times like that is there is much that is unfinished, much that I need to do. I am still required and there's many things that I'm relied on to do. And yet, death has no choice about those matters other than the time appointed for us. Jesus knew he was going to die. The priest who I visited knew she was going to die. And the thing that was most important in this gospel this morning was Jesus assuring his disciples that in spite of the fact that he was about to die, that he would always remain with them. It doesn't matter if we have denied Christ. It doesn't matter if we have given up on Christ. This gospel shows us that regardless of what was happening to the disciples, Jesus said the same thing to them all. Simply 
believe in me. When it comes to his death, the thing that was most important to him is that the disciples would be encouraged that even in death, his death, that they could continue to rely on him. This morning, as we consider this gospel, you will know many people who are faced with that situation. Our God, your God, reminds us simply this morning in our gospel that he goes to prepare a place for us, that where he goes, we can be also. But he also reminds the disciples that as they continue on in all that God has before them, that they will do even greater things than he. Or in other words, his ministry was very short, but they wouldn't be restricted in the same way. They can go and continue the ministry that he started. Today we're reminded of the call to ministry on each of us. That all we need to do is all that is contained in this gospel. That we're to believe that God who gave his son allowed him a sacrifice for us but that he would be resurrected and that we would receive as we see in this gospel his Holy Spirit. It's that Holy Spirit that we are gifted to in times like this come before him and pray Lord I bring this person before you. Lord, I bring myself before you this morning. The priest that I visited last Sunday, yesterday, was finally called home before God. She never got to go over the hill to do all that she wanted. But this gospel reminds us that we can trust our God for our families that we can trust our God for the appointed call on our lives whenever that may be, for everyone here that may be in a hundred years' time, whatever it is, in the fear and the challenges of life, in this case, the pending death of Jesus. He reminds us that in life, or even in death, that we can trust all matters to him, that we can trust our family into his care, that we can trust ourselves into his care, even with the fear of death over someone. That is who your God is. That is who your God promises to us. In my father's house are many mansions. And at the time where I appoint, whenever that is, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, at some stage, you too will get to be also. Amen. Heavenly Father, when Jesus left us, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to help us to know your presence within us. Help and guide us in all we think, do, and say. Help us to be the disciples that Jesus has asked us to be. So you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son, 
Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. We pray for our new leader of the church, King Charles. We pray that with your Holy Spirit dwelling in him, he will seek your guidance constantly, that you can guide him in every single decision he has to make. Be with him, Holy Father, at all times. And we thank you for the example his late mother set him. And we thank you for the support of his family. So Father, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and a light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. And we pray for the world. We pray for our physical world, Holy Father, for this planet and for the damage we have done to it. We pray that we sense will prevail and we will do what is right as far as it is concerned. We pray for the people of this world, for those who will look at one another with antagonism, for peoples at war with one another as they are in the Middle East and in Eastern Europe and in Central Africa. Creator of all, lead us and every people into the ways of justice and peace, that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. And we pray for our community. We pray for our families, Holy Father. From what Brendan has told us, dysfunctional families seem to be the thing of the time. We pray for those who would commit violence on one another the victims and the perpetrators. We pray for the children. We pray for the elderly. We pray for those police who have to deal with these things and for their counselors in turn. We pray for the medical services who also have to deal with this. For our firemen and ambulance officers. For our teachers who pick up so much of the strain with these children who live under these circumstances when they come to school. Many hungry, their clothes unkempt their little bodies unkempt. We pray for the psychologists and the psychiatrists, for our GPs and nurses. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. Oh, that integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. And we pray for those in need. We have a long list of people in our parish who need prayer. We pray for Nick Harry, Mrs. Harry and our beloved Pip and their siblings who sit beside his bed. We pray, 
Holy Father, for Jim and Christine Nielsen, for Gillian and Peter Hutchinson, for Toko and Ellen, Ellen Te Oro, for Anne Johnson, Waveney Whitehead, Stephen and Ian Chen, Jill McLeod, Vivian Bagley, Chris Apthorpe, Mary Peterson, is she the one who we lost? Stephen Alden, Piers and Rohan Ma. And we pray for Pare Reynolds and her family as they mourn the loss of Dave Robson. We pray for Paul's sister, Judy. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died, especially Mary and Dave, and those who mourn. Remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Father, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. And we praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. And let's take a moment to pray for ourselves and our own ministries. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.